Okay, hi everyone. So in this workshop, it's going to be Computer Science at UCLA by Bonnie Liu. Hi everyone. Thank you for coming to my workshop titled Computer Science at UCLA. And just a disclaimer before we start the um, presentation. Um, the only reason I didn't name it computer science in like in college is that I didn't want to speak for something that I wasn't comfortable, you know, like all the colleges. Um, so yeah, that's why it's about UCLA, but I'm sure you can apply it to any other college that you choose to attend. So we're going to start off with a little bit about me. Um, hi, my name is Bonnie. I graduated from Santa Clara High School in 2019, and um, that's how I became acquainted with the Terra Hacks team. And um, I am currently a rising second year studying computer science at UCLA. Okay, so we're gonna start with why UCLA. Um, there are a lot of great reasons. Um, as you probably know, it's ranked the number one public university in the United States by Times Higher Education and the acclaimed US News and World Report rankings. Um, but of course, rankings shouldn't be the number one thing you look at. Um, you should see if it's a good fit for you. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next. So we have really diverse student life here at UCLA. Um, as you can see here, I believe this is a picture of one of our activities fairs. All of these little booths are clubs and trust me, there are a lot more quads and like open areas during the club fair. And so there's just a lot of people um, and just anything that you could possibly think of, you could probably think of a club for it. And then this one up here is a dance team. Um, it's for beginners, a hip hop dance team. Um, so dance is pretty big at UCLA as well. And we also have cultural clubs as well as um, more technical clubs, which I'll talk about later um, when we get into that area. Okay, and then school spirit is really big at UCLA. So obviously UCLA is a D1 school and we're um, particularly well known for basketball, gymnastics, and football. And it's super cool because you get to meet all these crazy, insanely good athletes who will probably make it into the pro leagues um, later on. Um, in fact, I've met Caitlin Ohashi and she's super nice and super cool. So, you know, you get to just meet celebrities basically on campus. Um, and then we also have a really big student club called The Den. Um, and it's basically like school spirit. Um, we go and we cheer for games and um, there's a lot of people like you see this sea of people who's wearing blue like that's like tens of thousands of people who just show up to the game and um, we cheer on their same team so it's school spirit is a pretty big thing okay and then next UCLA has a really gorgeous campus so um, this over here is Royce Hall and it's really well known for the architecture and like besides this there's so many like pretty buildings and you know how UCLA is really sunny all the time so when you walk down like on your way to class you feel like you're so lucky to be there um, and it's just like really calm and relaxing overall so it's not like as stressful as if you went to like a really I don't want to say like ugly school but you know like it makes a difference it makes you feel happier okay and then the next thing is really important um, during non-COVID times, we get three years of guaranteed housing. Um, so basically what that means is that you get three years of housing um, offered by the university. Um, and it's not just like any old shabby housing, it's actually pretty fancy. Um, if you look up here, this is one of our residential um, suites. So that means like it's a dorm room. Um, people live here and here. Uh, and this one up here that's like hanging off is um, a lounge and it's really, really nice. Um, and it, as you can see, like filled with really great furniture as well. Um, this is inside one of our eating places slash studying places. So super fancy. And then the really nice thing about UCLA housing is that everything is located in like one area. So this is a like a map of the whole campus, this entire part over here. And all the housing places are located together. So all the dorms are up here. And that includes where you eat as well. I'm gonna zoom in on that. And this is what it looks like. So it's really nice because it really reinforces the community um, and everyone gets to study together even on the weekends. And that's like a really big pro for me. Okay, and then next it's LA. So LA has a lot of really fun places including Hollywood, Universal Studios, and this is Santa Monica Beach. 
And we have Korean Town we're with Korean BBQ, obviously, Japan Town with ramen um, and sushi. And then, of course, UCLA is near Beverly Hills, so we've got all the fancy food over here. And we also have Westwood, which is like a 10 minute walk away from campus. And that's what, um, where you can get really nice ice cream. There's like Chipotle, you know, anything you think of if you get bored of the dorm food. Um, the next thing is that UCLA is more affordable. I wouldn't say it's cheap, but it's like cheaper than other universities. And so I did some research and I compared UCLA to one of its rivals, UC Berkeley. Um, and so every nine months, which is the academic year, for California residents, it's $36,000 approximately if you live in the residence halls. And if you go to Berkeley, I think it's um, 40,000. So it's, it's a little bit of a difference. Um, so next, let's try comparing it to USC. Um, it's $79,000, which is more than two times the amount it'll take for you to go to USC, um, UCLA. And that's just for one year. So let's do some math. And UCLA over four years amounts to be about 147,000. UC Berkeley 162K and USC a whopping 316K. And so over four years, that's gonna be a 15,000 difference between UCLA and UC Berkeley and 170,000 between UCLA and USC. So unless you get financial aid, um, UCLA is clearly the cheaper option if money matters to you, um, I guess. So yeah, um, that's that. And then this one I was really excited about. Um, UCLA has the number one college food in the US according to Niche. And I'm not even kidding, but the food is so good. It feels like you're living on a cruise because the food is just amazing. Um, we have four dining halls on campus, like four main ones, and that's where you get to walk in and sit and eat. Um, and then the other four are takeout places. So if you're in a rush and let's say you have a midterm tomorrow and you wanna go back to your dorm and eat while studying, you can do that as well. Um, so overall, there are eight places where you can get food. And um, each dining hall has like a theme. So one dining hall is called B Plate, which is like healthy. So as you can see here, it's like tofu and like a Mandarin salad or something. Um, and then we also have another dining hall that's Asian themed. And I believe we're one of the only um, dining halls in the nation that offers like an Asian themed restaurant. So if you feel like you want ramen or Indian food one day, you can go to um, Feast, which is where you can get all the great Asian food. And then when I say UCLA is super extra, I mean we're super extra. Like every day you can get um, 10 different flavors of ice cream. Like there's crazy flavors, like cheesecake flavored. And there's um, two different places where you can get green tea ice cream. And uh, there's pistachio flavored. You know, like anything you can think of, you can probably get it at UCLA. Um, and the food is really good too. And yeah, it's just, I really miss it. <laughs> Okay, next we're going to get into why study CS at UCLA. Um, so obviously it's one of the top research universities. Uh, most undergraduates are able to secure a research position in their four years if they want to. A lot of people choose not to because they already get like internship offers and everything. Um, but if you're interested in grad school, it's available option for you. Um, and then the second reason is that we have really stellar student organizations. Um, especially for CS. So for CS, we have two big ones on campus, um, ACM, which is Association of Computing Machinery, and UPE, which is Upsilon Pi Epsilon, and UPE is the Computer Science Honor Society. Um, and we have many more, of course, but these two are really big and they're really well organized. Um, in fact, they have chapters in other um, universities and they have been named the best chapters in the nation. So um, really, really great community at UCLA. Okay, number three, there's a really rigorous curriculum. We have top-notch professors who will really challenge you to make sure that you're well prepared for grad school and or working in the industry, whichever one you decide. Um, they'll make sure you do your best. Okay, number four, the social environment. Um, pretty much everyone is well-rounded and outgoing, which is something that I've noticed for not all of these CS um, communities that I've visited um, when I was deciding between colleges. So that was really nice to know that everyone showed some sort of leadership. Everyone was really nice and everyone's really outgoing. Okay, number five, we're a really tight-knit community. Um, we only have like 140 people or so in the CS uh, 
department alone um, for my grade. And so we help each other out a lot and we all basically know each other, which is really nice. Um, so if you really want to go to a school that's bigger, but you also want to get that small school, like liberal arts college feeling, um, this is it. Like you'll, you'll feel that way because we all help each other out and it's like not toxic at all. Like people will have study sessions and they'll share um, practice tests with each other, um, et cetera. So it's, it's really nice. And then Number six is a big factor for me. I call it the care factor, for lack of a better term. But basically, when I visited UCLA, I knew it was it because everyone felt like they wanted to create a positive impact. And like that's the vibe that I got when I visited um, on engineering day. So I know that it's COVID right now, so you probably can't visit. But just trust me on this. Like when everyone's on campus, the care factor, like you can really feel it. So you're wondering probably UCLA sounds amazing, but what's the catch? And of course, UCLA is a public school. So class sizes are larger than private schools, but it's still considered pretty small for a public school. Um, it's an 18 to one student to faculty ratio, especially for the upper division courses. Um, upper division as in courses you'll be taking as a junior or senior that are more advanced. Um, you might not always be able to get the classes you want because there are so many people, but if you plan ahead, it really shouldn't be an option, especially if you're a student inside the engineering school, because they make sure you get more units than other people and you get priority for the engineering courses. If you just petition and tell your counselors that, hey, I want this class, even though it's full, is it okay if you can get me in or sign me up? Um, and most of the time they'll say yes. And of course, always have a backup option. Okay, curriculum. So like most of the other UCs, UCLA is on the quarter system. So that means it's 10 weeks per quarter. Um, I think only UC Berkeley is on the semester system out of the UCs. So what does that mean for UCLA though? That means 10 weeks per quarter, that's not a lot of time. Like if you fall behind, you're kind of screwed. Um, but that's just kind of how life is. So you just get used to it and you move on. Um, it really forces you to be disciplined. Um, but I mean, if you want, a semester system, go to Berkeley, I guess. Um, the other thing is that the curriculum is considered pretty theor theoretical. Um, that's really good if you want to go to grad school, but if you want to go to industry, some of what you learn might be less helpful in industry, like you might not use all of it. Um, that's just how the curriculum is designed. And the other thing is that because computer science at UCLA is under the engineering school, there's a really rigorous engineering curriculum. We have to take all of the math courses and um, all of the lower division physics courses. So be prepared for a lot of that. Um, if you're not into physics or you find physics really difficult, then maybe UCLA isn't for you as much. Okay, next I'm gonna try to address some common questions, concerns, and maybe misconceptions. Um, if you have questions after this, of course, I'm gonna open it up for Q&A as well. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Oops. I'm a high school student. How do I increase my chances of getting in and succeeding at UCLA? Um, so I'm gonna start with a disclaimer. There's like no one way to get in. Of all the people I've met, like everyone has a different story and a different path. Um, I'm gonna share my statistics, but I don't want you to think that like if you don't meet them, then you shouldn't apply because if you don't apply, then you have a zero percent chance of getting in. Um, so yeah, definitely try. But this is what I did in high school um, out of 4.0 unweighted GPA. And I was ranked 10 in the class. Um, I don't think most schools do rank anymore, but we did. And then I got a 34 on the ACT, see, which is actually lower than the 75, 75th percentile, which is 35 for UCLA. But I applied anyway, and like, you know, I got lucky and got in. So um, if you don't reach everything, like, don't worry. Um, yeah, and I took these AP classes. Um, and then these are some of my extracurriculars. So leadership is really, really important, even if you're like a CS major. Like a lot of people say like CS people are, don't have leadership or they're bad at socializing. Um, but that is definitely not the case at UCLA. Like 99% of the people are really social and you know they can speak and talk to each other like pretty well. So yeah, and then another thing that I wanna emphasize is what I did over the summer. Um, I did Cosmos and CTY, which is uh, hosted by Johns Hopkins. Um, 
and those were like really helpful, whether it be for making friends, having fun, and just gaining like experience, because colleges want to see that you're doing something over the summer. Um, so if you have the opportunity, please try and do that. Um, and then these are just some of the awards that I've gotten. So yeah, you can take a look later if you're interested. Um, okay, so once again, there's no one way of getting in. Everyone has a different story. But um, here are some tips. So number one, be on the lookout for opportunities. And when they do come, take full advantage of them, no matter what. Um, number two, use your summer to explore. I've included a list of like really good opportunities that I've come across um, over the years. And, you know, just some of these are super selective. Like I think RSI has a 7% acceptance rate, but like, it doesn't matter, just try it out. Um, you know, like it'll help you a lot and boost your application. Okay, and next, be kind, make sure to serve the community. Um, try your best to start now. Like, don't just wait until, you know, you're gonna say like one day, oh, well, one day I'll be rich and then I'll help other people. But like, no, just start now and like, it'll really pay off. And you know, who knows, maybe the people you help will turn around and help you later on. Okay, the next thing is develop your own leadership style. Um, this doesn't just mean like, I don't know, being the ASD president or being a club president. Um, it could mean different things. Like, for example, um, my friend, she wrote about on her college essay, she wrote how she was a freshman and she won senior night because she stepped up for her team. You know, like that's a really unique essay, like a freshman winning senior night. That's insane. Like that's basically unheard of. Um, so that's like really unique. Um, think about your own leadership style. Maybe it's leading from behind, um, leading by example, something like that. Okay, and then next, it's really important that you're passionate about what you do. Like don't do stuff only for the college app. Like, that's lame and you won't be enjoying your high school experience either. Um, and the last one is the most important, in my opinion, keep a journal and record your experiences. This is really good because it'll help you for your college essays when you become a senior and you need to write your essays. So yeah, okay. So how do I apply? Um, oops. So number one, start your essays as early as possible. Um, I included a link for the personal insight questions for the UCs. So for the UCs, you apply to all of the UCs at once um, and you just write the same as, you just turn in the same application and you just check which ones you want. So in the beginning stages of writing, I recommend you ask people who are close to you for ideas. And then in the later stages, if someone doesn't know you as well, um, I recommend asking them because then they can tell you more about what a college admissions officer would feel like um, when they read your essay. Okay, next. Um, what's the difference between CS, CSE, CE, and EE at UCLA? So when you apply for colleges, they tell you to check off boxes on the application for which major you wanna apply for. Um, and for UCLA, I believe you get to choose one option and then another backup option. So CS is computer science, CSE is computer science and engineering, CE is computer engineering, and EE is electrical engineering. So that's really confusing, so I'm gonna to try to break it down for you. Um, so there's a, actually, it's kind of a spectrum. So EE is really, really EE heavy. So it's a lot of EE and a little bit of CS. Computer engineering is approximately half EE and half CS. And computer science and engineering is a lot of CS and some EE. And computer science is pure CS and no EE unless you want to take those easy classes. Um, so there are obviously some other CS related courses, like majors offered by the College of Letters and Sciences. Um, for example, there's math and computation, computation and systems biology, and linguistics and computer science. So those are like CS and something else. Um, they have to take less courses than CS, a pure CS major, of course. Um, but they are easier to get into. And if you already know that you want to focus on something else, then maybe computational biology may be for you. Okay, and then a little bit about the freshman admission statistics um, for 2019, 2020, that's my year. Um, so electrical engineering, 98 people were enrolled um, and that's 17.8% acceptance rate. Computer engineering, which is a fairly new major, only 14 people are enrolled and the acceptance rate is 4.7%. Um, so pretty competitive. Uh, if you're not confident, I wouldn't recommend applying for that one. You can always switch in later if you want to. And then over here is computer science and engineering. 
um, enrolled is 48 people and the acceptance rate is 7.6. In computer science, there are 140 people enrolled and the acceptance rate is 8.6. So it's like a really small community, as I mentioned before. Um, but if you like that, I'd say like go for it and just, just give your shot, like it doesn't matter. Um, you never know if you're gonna get in or not. And even if you don't get in, like honestly, it's kind of a luck thing, so don't worry too much about it as well. Um, so yeah, just try. Okay, next, um, what courses will I have to take? So I'm gonna be talking more about UCLA, but um, for other schools, I would recommend um, going onto their website and just looking up, like for example, UC Berkeley um, computer science curriculum, and a lot of stuff will pop up and you'll be able to find that. Um, so yeah, okay, so for UCLA, Lower division classes are courses you're most likely going to be taking as a freshman or a sophomore. There are prerequisites for your upper division classes, so most people try to get these out of their way um, the first two years. But of course, everything is up to you. You can plan your own schedule as long as you fulfill the requirements for the classes you want to take. So for math, you have to take all of this. Um, so obviously, AP Calculus BC is these two courses, and the Multivariable Calculus is two quarters linear algebra, differential equations, and probability, which is technically an upper division, but I still count it as math. Um, so yeah, and then for physics, you have to take four classes, mechanics, oscillations, waves, electric, and magnetic fields, and electrodynamics, optics, and special relativity. You know, honestly, as a CS major, I don't know why I'm taking this class, but like I said, CS is under the engineering school at UCLA, so I have to, so that's what this is for. Um, and you have to take a lab, either mechanics or electricity and magnetism. And then for CS, you have to take intro to CS. We use C++, so this is basically intro to C++. And then after that, data structures and algorithms, computer organization, um, which is like things like assembly code and you know just lower level code. Um, and then after that, software construction laboratory and logic design of digital systems. Okay, and then for upper division, there are a lot of computer science, oops, computer science courses that you have to take. All of these that I listed are mandatory, and then you have to choose five more CS electives to take. So a lot of CS courses, if you're a pure CS major like me, um, if you want more information, I've included a link here that you can explore. Um, there are a lot of electives that you can choose from. Um, and then over here, we have something called science and technology electives. So basically, you have to choose three upper division electives from another department, um, either math, physics, statistics. And here's the catch, like you have to choose from the same department. So like you can't do one math course, one statistics course, and like one physics course. Like they have to be from the same department. And the reason they do that is so that you can kind of narrow down your focus. Um, for computer science, since computer science is such a interdisciplinary field, um, but a lot of people tend to choose like math or statistics or I don't know, like molecular biology. So um, just because it's like pretty related to our major. And once again, I put the options down at the bottom if you're interested. And then for technical breadth, we have three upper division electives from any other engineering department. So this was any department at UCLA pretty much. Um, that's is under this uh, link. And then the technical breadth is from another engineering department. So that includes like electrical engineering or any of these. Um, it's a little confusing. So if you want to ask questions, go ahead and let me know. Like, I'm sorry if it's confusing, but I included the link here if you want to do more research. Um, otherwise, just feel free to pop questions in the chat as well or ask me afterwards. Oh, and by the way, you also have to take two writing courses, one engineering ethics course, one American history course, and five general education courses on top of all of that. And so as you can see, it's a lot of stuff to take. And that's why for engineering majors, they offer us 21 units per quarter. Um, 21 units, if you don't know, that's like about four to five classes per quarter. Um, the limit for other schools is four classes maximum. So for us, it's about five classes maximum. Okay, oh gosh, that looks like a really heavy course load. Will I still be able to pursue a double major or minor? And the answer is yes, if you plan ahead. So you cannot double major or minor within the Samueli School of Engineering. So you can't be a CS major 
and AE major. Um, but there is one exception. You can be a bioinformatics minor. And what that means is like, you just take a couple of bioinformatics courses and like that's the only minor offered by the engineering school. And then you can use your SciTech options, which is what I mentioned here to fulfill your second major or minor uh, requirement. So once again, some of the common major minor options for a CS student include bioinformatics, math, stats, accounting, public affairs, applied math, math econ, and cognitive science. So yes, it's definitely possible. It's gonna be hard. Like being a CS major alone is gonna be really hard. But if you are feeling ambitious, like go for it. You can totally do this. Okay, um, will I be able to study abroad? Yes, if you plan ahead once again. Um, so there's a University of California Education Abroad Program. Um, and that offers, that applies to all of the UCs. Um, you just look on this website and they have a different, like a bunch of different sites. And then you look at the costs and then you apply. Um, one thing to note is that UCLA is on the quarter system. So most people try to do their study abroad during the fall. Um, or if you, if you want to do it for one semester, because UCLA starts in September and most of the semesters start in August. And so if you want to do study abroad, you want to do from August to December. Um, so yeah, and then you, as a CS major, it's really hard to like take your CS upper division somewhere else. So you may want to consider waiting and like pushing all your G's together and taking it abroad somewhere else. Um, that's what I'm personally planning on doing. Um, I'm trying to do it like my senior or junior. So that's what, yeah, that's what the G's are for. Um, okay, another question I get a lot is what should I do the summer before college? Okay, so I think you should enjoy your last summer break um, above all because think about it, after this, you're gonna be working for the next, I don't know, 40 years of your life. And the, the next time you'll actually have a break is your, when you retire, so that's pretty sad. Um, so try to like find out more about yourself during this time and start looking into the classes you're gonna take in the fall. Um, I've included the link for UCLA, but I'm pretty sure if you just do like a quick Google search, like UC Berkeley course schedule, um, a lot of stuff will come up, I'm pretty sure. And then after that, like try to make a preliminary for your college course plan. Um, this will most likely change, but um, it's okay. Like it's good to have a roadmap of where you're going. Okay, learn C++ or whichever language your college uses. I believe, um, so UCLA uses C++, but I think Berkeley and a lot of other colleges use Python instead. So, you know, like maybe learn both on your free time. Um, and then my last piece of advice is working on a project that you're passionate about. Um, if you're not interested, then you're not gonna wanna do it. So, I mean, work on a project that you care about and that will actually genuinely help the world. Okay, cool. Um, wait, I think I had one more slide, sorry. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the stuff I'm personally doing at UCLA um, in terms of my extracurriculars. I think I may have skipped over it while I was scrolling, sorry. Okay, yeah, right here. Um, okay, so some of the stuff that I've been working on include um, a lot of projects. So the nice thing about um, clubs at UCLA is that there are a lot of project-based clubs where you get to work with a team. And if you don't have experience, that's totally okay. Um, you'll have a team leader who will guide you through stuff, and that's super nice. Um, that's what I did for Creative Labs. I worked on a virtual journal that allows friends to connect on a deeper level, and I was a front-end developer, and this is my first quarter at UCLA. I had no idea what was going on, but um, my team leader was super nice. Like, just don't be scared to ask for help. Like, most people will be willing to help you. And then another course that I kind of want to plug is Engineering 96. Um, that's like a special course for people who are um, like interested in doing more hands-on stuff. So the one I took was called Artificial Intelligence Arena. Um, and basically what we did in that class is we built Pac-Man AI agents that played capture the flag against each other, which was really, really cool. This was actually using UC Berkeley CS188 curriculum. And of course we got a lot of guidance because we were like freshmen, but you know, that's like still something really cool for you to explore. And then right now I'm working on um, the data grid, which is like uh, just 
analyzing an extensive database of campus resource audits at UCLA. So that includes like toilet audits, um, sink audits, et cetera. Okay, and then some of the organizations that I'm involved in include um, IEEE, that's like electrical engineering, um, women advancing teamwork with technology. Um, and I'm the events coordinator for that. And our mission is to facilitate recruitment and retention of women in tech. So there are a lot of women in tech um, and like other diversity uh, clubs on campus for engineering, which is really nice. Um, I wouldn't say join all of them, but when you're exploring, when you first join like UCLA, go ahead and like explore the different clubs, like go to all of their club meetings and then just slowly dwindle out of some of them and just eliminate your choices until you like end up having two or three clubs that you're really focused on. Okay, and then the other thing is that I'm also involved in UPE, which is UCLA's Computer Science Honor Society. I'm the entrepreneurship chair for that. So I just focus on doing like um, planning out guest speakers and like networking with um, new startups and stuff like that. And then additionally, um, I do a lot of volunteering. Um, I volunteer the Asian American Tutorial Project, and that's just uh, for every week to tutor underprivileged elementary school students. And there are a lot more other volunteer opportunities, and trust me, a lot of UCLA students volunteer. So, like, yeah, you can say you're a CS major and, like, you know, you'll probably be busy all the time, but, like, if you really make time for it, you can do whatever that you really want to. Um, so, yeah, like, that's what I spend my time doing. And then, of course, sports, um, intramural basketball is what I do, but they have a lot of crazy sports. Like, um, they have cornhole, <laughs> which is where you throw the, um, thing into the hole and then uh, they also have self-defense classes for free and then I also took a boxing class at the recreation center at UCLA so as you can see a lot of different things you can explore um, and like just switch it up every quarter and, like make the most of your college life um, so yeah that's it for my presentation chat or you can unmute yourself Okay, if not, then um, I included my email here. Feel free to reach out to me if you want help, um, I don't know, like with college advice or, oh, there's a question. Um, is it possible for students to double in CS and physics? Yes, definitely. Um, it's gonna be really hard though because both are really tough uh, majors, like really infamous, but yes, it is definitely possible. Um, I would suggest you, are you saying double majoring or minoring? in physics. Okay, then um, look at the physics website at UCLA, just search up UCLA physics, um, and they'll have like a curriculum course load for you, and you can just look it up. Mm -hmm, good question. And what's the biggest takeaway that you had from UCLA so far? Okay, that's a really good question as well. Um, I'd say when I started at UCLA, I was really scared to ask for help, like really, really scared. Um, I just felt like I had to learn everything by myself, do everything by myself. But eventually I realized that everyone's in it together. And if you don't know a question, like other people probably won't know either. So just do your best. And like, you know, if you need help, ask for like go to office hours, go ask the professor. The professor's so nice and willing to help you. And like, don't be afraid that people are going to be judging you because let's be honest, like everyone's been there before. Like everyone had that point in time where they didn't know anything either. And like everyone had to learn. So if they don't understand, then they're basically a douchebag like, for lack of a better term. So just um, don't be afraid to ask for help. Cool, is there any other question? Just curious, um, what grade are you guys all in? Or if you type it in the chat. Rising sophomore, okay. Okay, that's super awesome. So you guys are starting early. Um, are you guys interested in UCLA at all? Well, obviously you are. Other. Okay, rising junior, okay. Um, I would suggest you start writing your um, essays, Anna, when you're like probably, May of your junior year. So like start thinking about ideas as soon as possible. 
um, and that goes to everyone else as well. Um, and keeping your journal really does help with that. Just like, even if it's just like five minutes a day. Okay, cool. Well, I wish you guys all best of luck um, with your college apps. And if you have any questions like ever, feel free to email me over here. And then I included my LinkedIn as well, if you wanna connect. Um, so yeah, like any questions, just let me know. I'll be more than happy. Okay, cool. Thank you, everyone. Stop the recording.